management mechanics for spread trading. Oh my gosh, it's exactly what Errol asked for here. Not really, but I think it's going to be a fun conversation. We talk so much about you know day trading outrights Errol and how to manage it. Oh, if this thing is up 50 cents and the standard deviation is 40 cents, I'm going to sell it. And what am I looking for? Oh, I'm looking for maybe half of the standard deviation. So 20 cents on the downside or 20 cents on the upside if I'm going to take a loss. I want to try to do the same thing for spread trading here, the, the management mechanics behind this, because a lot of people, yourself included, are getting intrigued by the idea of putting two markets together, right? Yeah. If, if Frank is trading it, there's something important there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I I, <laughs> I don't want to get too like drunk on power here. Yeah. If Errol is just like whatever whatever Frank says, I'm jumping into it because uh, uh, because with that power comes great responsibility. I think Batman yeah. said that, but I'm not going to steer you wrong here. I think there is great opportunity in putting two markets together, and that's that's all it really takes to create a spread. Errol is you take two similar markets. Here we have interest rates. You've got the two year. You've got the 30 year in red, the two year in white, the two different yield markets, but same interest rate asset class. And they're performing differently. And I think there's opportunity in that. I mean, is, is that making enough sense? Uh, just like, uh, do you have any questions on what spread trading is or I how guess, it's different than outrights? Yeah, I guess let's just take it, take it from, you know, from the very basics, you see a spread, spread trading. Where exactly within the spread do you see opportunity? Like, ooh, this spread, I see a lot more opportunity in this spread rather than this spread. I know they're both a spread, both a spread trade. Why is one a better opportunity? So, a great, great question. And to me, it 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 branches into two different parts of my brain, which is short term and long term. Okay. What we're talking about for the most part today is long term, uh, just given that. The opportunity in my mind is in the fact that in the long term, and we'll get to the chart here in a second, this spread is at an extreme for like the last couple of years here. And so I am in my long term part of my brain saying, okay, this is something I could see getting on the other side of and holding for a few days. Now, there's also the short term part of my brain that is, okay, are these two things you know, is this spread opportunistic today? Is there something okay. going on today that's creating uh, an opportunity? Now, the next question I'm sure in your mind and a lot of people at home is what creates that opportunity? In spread trading, the opportunity is as simple as okay. divergence. When you have two things that are just set, two things that are similar that are separating, that's where the opportunity is. And you can see here that you have that in spades with a white line that is rallying like crazy mm -hmm. up hundreds of percentage points and a red line, a market that's supposed to be highly correlated, that's not even at its highs for this data set. So what's differentiating the opportunity for the short-term basket and the long-term basket in terms of your thought process? So a lot of times they'll align, right? Yeah. Like to today they are aligning a little bit in the fact that 30-year yields are down like 30 or 40 uh, cents, uh, this S30Y product. And S2Y, the two-year yields are only down like 10 or 20 cents. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing that separation on the short term and here in the long term. And so they do come together a lot of times, those opportunities in both parts of the brain. But you do have to separate for yourself, like, am I doing this as a day trade or am I doing this as you know a multi-day, potentially yeah. weeks? Yeah, trade, what you know? differentiates that? Um, I, honestly, like mm -hmm. on a day like today, I would feel comfortable doing two of these and saying one of these is a day trade and the other one is a longer term trade. It really just comes down to like, what do you want the adventure to be? You yeah. know, like, are, are you into this being a trade that you hold for a couple of weeks? Yeah. Then, then hold it for a couple of weeks and we'll show you how to manage that uh, with, with that mindset in line versus like, if you're looking for just like a trade for today, some opportunity to get in and out of something, then you'll manage accordingly with that as well. And we'll actually get to that here in a second, but let's get a little deeper on why you might look at uh, spread trades. It creates a unique strategy. You can see, so now this is the 
spread market, which is the 30-year minus the two-year. And you can see this chart looks a lot different than either of these charts, yeah. right? So you're presenting with spreads a really unique opportunity for your portfolio, a diversified strategy for the active trader out there. But the question then becomes, okay, you know, I'm a contrarian. I'm into buying cheap markets, selling high markets on day trades or swing trades, using options, using futures, what have you. I'm into buying this spread here at the lows. I'm going to buy the S30Y and sell the S2Y to get this unique strategy in there. How do I manage it? What am I looking for? Because in the singular uh, outright trades, we have our standard deviations here, Errol, where if it's a day trade, then I'm looking to manage it for probably around half of that standard deviation. If the market uh, here has a standard deviation of 40 cents, it's up 50 cents. I sell it. I'm looking to make 20 cents on the downside. Same for if the market's moving lower and I buy it. Uh, I'm managing just around half of that uh, standard deviation using what the market usually does, what's realistic to manage. Are you with me so far? I'm with you. Standard deviations. It's like it's coming up. We talk about it every week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's essential like, this is an important piece of our futures trading. It's like a foundation. It, it is it, it is really the implied volatility. Uh, what that is to options, standard deviation is to futures. So in the same way, and, and I'm glad that you brought up, you know, okay, well, what makes it a day trade versus yeah. uh, a week-long trade? You kind of make that decision for yourself. And in the same way that like if this market was at an extreme on the year, but today there's no real movement between the spreads, oh, then it's a long-term trade for me. I'm not expecting to day trade something that's not showing any opportunity intraday. But if I am looking for it in a day trade with that S2I, knowing the standard deviations here, like I said, I'm looking for 20 bucks. If I am in that longer-term version uh, of, of my mind here, then I'm probably looking for what this market could do in a week or so, which would be just taking that standard deviation based uh, management tactic, that 20 bucks, half of one standard deviation in that market, and just kind of multiplying it by five for like a week long trade. And so if I'm looking for a week trade in S2I, I'd look for a hundred bucks. Is that all kind of checking out? No, yeah, just in terms of managing it. And I know we had to kind of run through that. But one quick thing I wanted to ask again, I know we talked about, let's say we sold two and you wanted to hold one to hit your profit target for the short term. And let's say you want to hold one more for, let's say, a few days. Um, now, mm -hmm. let's say the market's closing in a couple hours and it's not hitting my profit target yet for the short term trade. Um, am I going to take that off, even though it hasn't my profit target? I'm taking that one. I'm taking that one off. If it cool. if 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 one of your trades there is a day trade, it's got to come off as a day trade. If you're only doing one trade and it's a day trade, it's got to come off as a day trade. If you're only doing one and you've already told yourself this is something I want to hold for uh, a, a bigger profit for multiple days, then it stays on past that close. But great point there. And where we'll finish is with spread trades, it's very simple in my mind, the mechanics for managing them. Since spreads are, Errol, hedged versions of the outrights, they're, they're considered most times smaller versions of trading those outrights on their own because you're putting two things against each other oh, and it should create a hedge. I'm looking for 50% of what I would look at uh, in the outright. So on a day trade in the tub spread, I'm only looking for 10 or so dollars. On a week long trade, I'm looking for 50 bucks. If I'm looking to hold this for a month or so, then I'd be uh, looking at maybe 100 to $200. Is that all making sense for managing uh, your spread trades? Yeah, that makes sense. Managing the trade and I guess managing expectations too. And that's a great pay place to land at here, Errol, is like all of your mechanics, whether it's spreads, outrights, whatever it is, futures, options should almost always be a function of like what's realistic in this market. Okay. And so to me, it always, I know everybody out there doesn't have access to standard deviations on everything, but you can kind of in your mind, get a sense of like, oh, this market usually moves like 30 bucks on a mm -hmm. given day. So I would manage it on a day trade for 15 bucks or on a week long trade for like, 45, 50, but like you kind of, you can kind of hopefully get to that stuff uh, in just uh, your anecdotal evidence from watching markets day to day. No, yeah. I like.